Hello, everyone. Hello, parents. Well, welcome to my open house video. Um, this is a pre-recorded message that will uh, serve essentially as our reflection for uh, the end of the year and uh, what uh, what we did for the year and uh, sort of upcoming announcements and things like that. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. And I'll go ahead and go over that. So uh, <clears throat> my name is Todd Osborne. I teach AP US history to Quest Juniors. Um, the contents of this presentation, they're gonna cover the year in review, um, grading, very important for second semester, the remainder of the year, final exams, and of course, suggestions for summer enrichment. So year in review. So it's been quite the year. Uh, I feel that in addition to all the material that the students learned, they learned some very important survival skills. Uh, they learned, uh, you know, coping mechanisms. They learned um, study techniques uh, and, and how to master online learning. And this will be really important going forward in, in college when more and more and more um, you're going to be um, sort of given the responsibility and independence of checking the syllabus, keeping on pace, doing assignments on your own. Um, so maybe we can uh, you know, find some good, some silver linings in, in this very difficult year. But we also uh, learned a foundational understanding of US history. I hope that the students, um, that will give them an appreciation for the unique history of their country, um, how we uh, have grown as a nation, how we've addressed certain problems. Um, and uh, hopefully that makes them a better citizen, a more informed voter, a better um, consumer of information in this digital age. That's always a challenge. So that's definitely a hope of mine. Uh, students have mastered historical critical thinking skills. So that's the other half of this class is not only knowing the names and dates, the nuts and bolts of history, but the skills that historians use to make judgments about it, uh, to make a thesis. So that is compare contrasting the similarities between phenomenon, seeing the differences, uh, seeing when we go from period to period, how there's continuity with uh, American trends you know, economical trends, political trends, social trends, but also there's constant change going on. And so in each era, what's really changing and what's staying the same? Cause and effect, very important to know. And students have continued to do that. Why do certain events occur when they occur? Um, periodization, when can we say that we're in the progressive era? When can we say that we're in uh, the era of the 1960s, when can we say that uh, that we've entered the Civil War, the revolution? And uh, we've learned to make an argument to you know come up with the time period and then justify it with facts. Contextualization is really important. What was going on at that time that helps us better inform it and judge that time? Um, and as I say at the bottom, you have all survived a once in a century pandemic and have become living history. I, I recommended to students in September when I met them for the first time, that they should all be keeping a journal right now because they are living through the most momentous year probably in a hundred years since 1919. And my students know 1919, you had a huge baseball scandal with the Black Sox. You had a once in a century pandemic. You had race riots. You had um, difficulties with the peace in World War I. Um, and so I wanted them to, to kind of get a perspective of that. And hopefully they were watching the news this year because it was a, a momentous year in, in this country's history. So hopefully you can reflect on that when, when you're my age and talk to younger generations about what you experienced and, and how you dealt with this situation. So uh, practical matters, boosting your final grade. A lot of you um, are in need at this particular time. Uh, most of you have, have adapted pretty well, but I know a lot of you have been going through a lot of struggles this year. And I'm going to continue to try to be understanding about that, uh, allow grace periods for makeup work. Because uh, really, I want everyone to be able to pass this class. And it is a good thing that the AP test was so late in the year on June 2nd. So that gave us quite a bit of time to study. But when the AP test is done, and we need to shift gears and, and consider late work, there's not much time to the end of the year. So if you are missing a substantial amount of assignments that are impacting your grade, please begin now. 
uh, all assignments can be made up for any student. Uh, if, if there's an issue with the quiz being locked or an essay that was timed, you know, being locked, just let me know. I can either unlock those or excuse the work if it if it pertains to that situation. Um, but you are allowed to make anything up to help boost your grade at this point. So please take advantage of that. Uh, there are multiple extra credit assignments, at least four right now on the table. So be aware of that. Uh, and remember that your sort of, you know, ace in the hole, so to speak, your, your get out of jail free card is that if you pass the AP US history test, I get those results in July, I can and will go back and raise your grade uh, both semesters uh, if needs be. So put everything you can, all your energy into that exam if you need a boost in your grade as well, because that's a, that's a means to do it as well. Please contact me if you haven't done so already about a plan to move forward because there are, you know, normally in, a, in any given year, there might be one or two students in each class who, who are failing. This year, it's, it's quite a bit more. And so, uh, you know, good news is it's still May. I'm concerned. I've reached out to quite a few of you. Some of you uh, have not reached out to me at this point. Please do, and we'll get you on track. We'll develop a plan so you can boost your grade, and that way you won't have to repeat the course. Okay, final exam. So at this particular moment, I have no plans to actually give and administer a final exam. We're putting all of our energy into reviewing for the AP test right now. Uh, and everything is really sort of practice at this point. I think we'll probably do one last essay that's graded, but in terms of a multiple choice test, uh, we tried that once, it, it does not work very well for online. Therefore, um, after the AP test, I don't intend to offer any new assignments or final exams because we're working at boosting people's grades. Instead, uh, this is the final exam schedule, but during those time periods, I want uh, students to have an opportunity to complete and then turn in any late work that they have, any missing work, anything like that. And everyone else, it'll be sort of a celebration of the end of the year. And, uh, and that'll be it, essentially. So going on to the next one. So suggestions for summer enrichment. I don't normally have a portion on this for, for open house. What I do instead is it, it this time of year when the AP test is normally over with, I would have uh, your senior project teacher come in and talk to you about senior project. I'd have your counselor come in or the um, uh, workers for the uh, college and career center come in and talk to you about college apps and things like that. Since COVID's going on and that there are barriers to having people come into the class and do it. Uh, I'm just kind of suggesting to you to do those things on your own. So one suggestion, think of a senior project topic. I, I will work with Mrs. Barragon to see if we can set something up so you can think about parameters and stuff. But I think you know enough at this point um, to start at least thinking about it. You don't have to totally home in on something and have it decided uh when you start in september but i will tell you that this is going to take up a significant chunk of senior year and the students that struggle the most are the ones who can't figure out what they want to do once you figure it out it's just a matter of putting in the work but honestly the hardest thing is thinking of what challenge do i want to take uh how difficult will that be or how easy will it be how do i how do i define the parameters of that project so please start thinking about it over the summer something that you're passionate about don't do something where you just pick it for convenient reasons. In order to put in the work, you're really going to need to love what you're doing. So consider those things. Suggestion two, personal statement for college. I'll try to work on again, giving you specific guidelines about that. It's not my forte, it's not my area of expertise, but I'll talk to Mrs. Barragan. And uh, it's a good idea to start working on it or at least thinking about your personal statement. Three, try to visit some colleges this summer, if you can. Um, you know, that could prove difficult flying across the country. There's still, you know, restrictions and whatnot, but you could drive places. Uh, you, I feel really bad that we were not able to do the field trip and go to Santa Barbara or Cal Poly Slow or Loyola Marymount. That might be a good little road trip for you and your family this summer. You know, take a little vacation to Santa Barbara, or Pismo Beach, stop in Cal Poly Slow, stop at UC Santa Barbara, stop at Loyola. Check out some of these universities, California, you know, I'm a big, uh, uh, you know, 
advocate of being proud of being from California. I think we need a bit more of uh, of that arrogance here. You know, um, other states are, are, are much more proud and in your face about it. California is the best university system in the world. Um, in terms of like each state, it, it's remarkable what we have, both public and private. So check it out. And your parents would probably be happy if you weren't all the way on the other side of the country. So check out all that California has to offer for, for some of these universities. See if you can travel there, do some research uh, and, uh, and consider that. And then number four, uh, it's a good idea to start requesting letters of recommendation or at least thinking about teachers that could testify to that. It'd be a good idea to at least give them a heads up and say, hey, you know, you don't need to write it yet because this is July, but I think that you're a good person to talk about um, my positive qualities. So would you consider writing that for me? And then once you've pinned down the recommender and they've agreed to it, then you got that in the bank and you just move forward and remind them again in, in the fall. But that would be a good idea to have all your ducks in a row for the fall because college apps are almost another course in and of itself. You don't want that pressure of just leaving that for the fall. So uh, end of year things. Now, I don't have a lot of information yet on how to return books. Uh, we're in a very different situation. In September, there was no vaccine. Our numbers were you know, not crazy awful, but much worse than now. Things are drastically improved. So how will that change how you all return books? I don't know exactly. They have not told us yet, but please don't forget I need the textbooks back. Um, I, I think I only have about 10 or 12 textbooks in my classroom right now that, that were extra. I need all of them back so that next year the juniors can have them. Please don't forget. I know that it's a big pain in the neck if you're remote learning to come in, but, but pay attention, carve out a slice of time where you can come in and turn those in, please. And also the crash course books. Now that would be only for students that were in person, the hybrid students, which is a relatively small amount of you, but I do need those back as well. Again, I, I don't have any room for error here. If you know if, if 15 or 20 of you neglect to turn those in, then I'm out of luck next year. I gotta buy those books over again and I really need them back. So please make sure that as soon as the AP test is done, you give me the review books back. And as soon as you know how to return the textbooks, return those, okay? And, those of you in person can probably just return those to me, but those of you not in person, we gotta figure it out and I will let you know. Last thing is the AP test is coming up and back in the fall, I think in November, I had to set up review dates. I believe those dates have changed because my calendar has changed, honestly. For instance, the night before the AP test, uh, I am gonna have a review with you. I had intended to do a three hour review from three to six. But I just found out, you know, my son's in baseball. He has a game that evening at 530 against the Red Sox. And the Red Sox beat them last time by a single run. And I really want to be there for my kid because he's really excited about it this year. So I'm going to have a review from 3 to 5 uh, on June the 1st. Um, May the 29th, that's the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend, you know. Memorial Day is on Monday. Sunday usually is when the barbecues happen. So I thought it might be a good idea to do a morning review on that Saturday, just two hours, nine to 11, if you can make it great. If you can't, no big deal. But these would all be on Zoom. We can't get together in any big groups. And then May 27th, which would be the Thursday there before the AP test. So none of these are mandatory. They're just optional if you want to go to it. And we'll probably review using questions rather than have me just go over nuts and bolts kind of facts about history. I think at least two of the three sessions will be going over essay questions and working on our skill set that way. Um, but please mark your calendars. As of right now, those are the times and dates. They might change, but I think these are pretty much locked in. And that is all. Um, I really appreciate all of you, your, your earnestness, your help, your support uh, throughout this very difficult year. Um, and, and I'm very glad and can say that this has brought out to me the best in, in our community. I'm very grateful for that. I've had teachers that have dealt with all kinds of discipline issues, Zoom bombers, all that stuff, which uh, they warned us a lot about it. it. Hasn't happened all year. My students have been um, very well behaved, very conscientious, very kind, um, very uh, inquisitive. And I appreciate that. This year, difficult though it was, could have been a lot more difficult without your support and without your, you know, frankly, love for your community. I, I know that you all love Quest. I love Quest. We wanted Quest Millican to be a, 
wonderful place and a better place. And, and I think that you've done your fair share in, in ensuring that. So thank you very much. Don't be a stranger. Uh, most of you I have not met in person yet. So next year, stop by. I'm going to have a wall of fame where I have all of your pictures up. Uh, celebrating you passing the AP test. And even if you don't pass the AP test, please stop in, say hello, so that I can at least, you know, see you in person one time uh, before you graduate, okay? All right, everyone, have a wonderful summer. Hopefully you're enjoying your open house and uh, have a good night. Thank you, bye-bye.